Hey guys, and welcome back for today's video where I want to talk about a piece of news that started circling the internet last night and why I believe it's a nice early Christmas present to the progressive wing of the Democratic Party wrapped up and handed over to them by the establishment wing of the Democratic Party and those big Democratic donors who are starting to freak out about the current situation that we have in this 2020 Democratic primary. So first, I want to talk about the current state of of the 2020 Democratic primary, why the big donors are starting to freak out, and then what happened last night that is really great news, in my opinion, for the progressives. So starting off, the current situation that we have, the average of the recent polls, still has Biden in first place, as we can see here, at 28 Point three percentage points, followed by Warren in second at 20.6. She has seen a little bit more weakness in recent weeks compared to where she was. And then Sanders gaining a little bit, as we can see him back up to around 17.6 percentage points. So those are the top three, the clear three front runners. And then behind them, there's quite a gap. But then you get down to Pete Buttigieg at seven percentage points, Kamala Harris at four and a half, Klobuchar at 2.6. And it just goes down from there. So First, I'm going to talk about this from the perspective of the big Democratic donors, the establishment wing of the party. So what they see right now is a three-way race between Biden, Warren, and Sanders, where Biden has seen this trajectory where he is slowly but surely receding down. Now, I think Biden's numbers might be a little bit more resilient than maybe what a lot of other people on the left might think, and that's because it just seems like he has such a committed group of older voters as well as the African-American vote that's likely to continue to stay behind him. So he might be more resilient up there in the upper 20 percentage range than maybe what a lot of people think, especially because of this downward trend that we're seeing from Biden. We'll see if it continues to trail off, but he has been relatively resilient over uh, the past few months. And so they're seeing Biden not necessarily showing great strength in the polls when you're taking the look from where we were about a half a year ago compared to now. And then on top of that, Biden, he continues to stumble around his words in the debates and has a hard time forming strong, coherent sentences. And the Biden camp is really going through this campaign, trying to limit the amount of public exposure that Biden has because he's pretty much been a gaffe machine when he's out there in the public eye. On top of that, his fundraising numbers have been abysmal. He has almost no grassroots support behind his candidacy, and he just backtracked and started accepting super PAC money because he's done so poorly in terms of raising money, where Warren and Sanders, with that progressive movement behind them, have been the top fundraisers and getting those small dollar donations have been able to significantly outrange, outraise their competitors like Biden and Buttigieg. So then the other hope potentially for the centrist wing of the Democratic Party is Pete Buttigieg. Now he's been hovering between about five to seven percentage points for the better part of the past year. He has seen a little bit of an uptick over the past month, but nothing crazy or out of the realm of what we actually had even seen from Buttigieg in the past. He's kind of positioned himself more as a moderate where at the start of the race, he was a bit more some would say on the progressive side of things, he's kind of at a transformation. I actually think this is strategic from Buttigieg because he might be positioning himself where even if he doesn't go on and win this 2020 Democratic presidential primary, he could still have higher aspirations in his state of Indiana, maybe in the future running for the Senate or the governorship, for instance. And if he positions himself more as a centrist Democrat, he's probably viewing it as a possibility where he could have some success in the state of Indiana, for instance. But getting back to the topic at hand, so the establishment, they probably don't think Buttigieg can make the kind of gains needed to be a serious threat. But even on top of that, they don't like the fact that he lacks experience and he does really poorly with African-American voters. He gets less support from African-American voters than Donald Trump. And that's not something the establishment wing, these big Democratic donors want in a candidate. So right now, if you're that particular block of the Democratic Party, you're thinking, okay, Biden, he's shown some weaknesses. He's having a hard time fundraising. Buttigieg, from the reasons that I just gave, might not be the best candidate. And we have these two progressives who are showing relative strength in the polls and have a really good shot at going on and winning the nomination. So what are we going to do about this? So now they're thinking about maybe getting a new candidate in there to have success. So some names that I heard floated around are people like Michelle Obama, maybe Hillary Clinton, Eric Holder. But the news that we got last night is it looks like billionaire Michael Bloomberg is going to possibly be throwing his hat in the ring. And it looks like it's almost a certainty at this point that he might be getting in the race. Now, why is this a gift from the establishment wing of the Democratic Party to the progressives? Well, I don't think Bloomberg can get the kind of base in a Democratic primary where he can 
he can be a serious threat to go on and win this thing. I think best case scenario, if Bloomberg goes all in, puts a ton of his own money and resources behind his candidacy, kind of like what we're seeing from Tom Steyer. And then on top of that, he's going to be getting really positive press from the mainstream media, those who follow CNN, MSNBC, The New York Times, The Washington Post. There's likely to be a lot more positive published about Bloomberg than negative, and that could also help him a little bit in the polls from the people, especially in the Democratic Party, that follow those media outlets. But I think his best case scenario might be in the five to maybe on the highest end, eight percentage point range if he's really pulling away from the other centrists that are already in the race. So if you get a situation, let's just say best case scenario, Bloomberg somehow gets up to around Buttigieg level numbers, around seven to eight percentage points. So what does that mean for where the race currently stands? So we see Biden there up at 28 percentage points, Buttigieg at seven percentage points. So let's say he knocks off a couple of points from Buttigieg, who maybe goes down to five points. Maybe he takes around five percentage points or six percentage points from Biden. Well, now all of a sudden, Biden nationally might go down to around 23, 22 in the lower 20 percentage points. And then you have an even closer race at the top between Biden, Warren, and Sanders. And I think that gives an even better opportunity for the progressives to go on and win this nomination, especially with what we're seeing in a lot of these early state polls where Biden isn't doing very well, consistently pulling in third or fourth place in states like Iowa and New Hampshire. And if you get really slow results out of the gate, that can possibly reduce your chances at going on and having success after that point in time. So I think it potentially weakens Biden overall by taking away that support and putting it towards somebody like a Michael Bloomberg. And that just gives a better chance for the progressives to have success. And I really don't understand what the establishment and the big Democratic donors are thinking at this point in time, trying to get somebody else in there, because they should have been thinking about this months ago, even before Biden got in the race. Who are we going to support? Who are we going to get behind? Somebody like a Kamala Harris, a Cory Booker, um, an Amy Klobuchar, But those candidates have absolutely failed during this process. They're in the lower single digits, especially Kamala Harris. Everyone in the mainstream media particularly felt like she was going to be the front runner, the best case, best chance for the Democrats to go on and have success during this primary season. But that just hasn't been the case, especially after that first rise that we saw from Harris, where she got up here into the mid-teens. Well, after the second debate where Tulsi Gabbard pretty much ended her political career, we've seen a consistent backtrack from Harris since then. And now she's all the way down to around three to four percentage points. So she's been a failed candidate. So Again, like I've been saying, the establishment looking for somebody else to possibly throw in the ring, and it looks like Michael Bloomberg might be that individual. But at the end of the day, this just likely leeches support away from Biden and gives Warren and Sanders an even better opportunity to win this thing. And if we get a situation where we're going towards the convention and nobody has 50% of the pledged delegates, what the progressives could do with Warren and Sanders is unite their ticket, combine their pledged delegates, and that could possibly get them above the line on that first ballot. So then they don't have to worry about the super delegates handing it over to somebody like a Biden or a Buttigieg or a Bloomberg. So that's what I wanted to talk about in today's video, just the current state of the 2020 Democratic presidential primary and why the establishment and those big Democratic donors are freaking out at this point in time, what they're doing and why I think at the end of the day, what they're deciding to do is still great news for the progressive. So I appreciate you guys stopping by. Consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and hope to see you guys back here for my next video.